Dan Wells is a horror writer whose first book, I Am Not a Serial Killer, is already huge in Europe. It comes out in the United States in March 2010. This is a lot more people than I expected. This is the largest group of soon to be disappointed people at this convention. Um, let me explain really briefly who I am so that those of you who are in the wrong panel can leave. Um, I'm Dan Wells. I am a horror writer. I have to be very careful of that pronunciation. A couple of years ago, I told everyone I was going to the World Horror Convention and got a lot of funny looks. Um, anyway, horror is an interesting genre. My book is actually being marketed as a psychological thriller. The first one is called I Am Not a Serial Killer. It's an autobiography. Um, it's out in Europe. It's doing very well in Europe. It's been out there for a year. After, I think, three years ago, I, I sold it, and it's coming out in the U.S. next month. Finally. So, finally. Um, in addition to being a writer, I also do a podcast some of you may be familiar with called Writing Excuses. Who listens to Writing Excuses? Awesome. Everybody else, I'm sure you're also awesome. Um, writing Excuses is me, Brandon Sanderson, who's a fantasy writer you may have heard of, Howard Taylor, who's a sci-fi artist who's bigger than all of us put together, um, and we talk about writing uh, for 15 minutes a week. It's every Monday. You can look it up. I've got business cards up here if you want to grab one for the website address. All right. Um, let me, uh, while, while we're waiting for this, let me give you a little bit of background then on this presentation. Uh, somebody asked me uh, last year what, story, what my favorite book on story structure was. And I thought about that for a minute, and I thought, it's the Star Trek role-playing game narrator's guide, which is not what this person was expecting. Um, role-playing games, I'm not going to talk about role-playing games very much, but I am going to say that they are a really valuable source of story structure information, because teaching you how to tell a good story is their whole product. So that's what they do. And uh, this particular book I thought was awesome. And uh, I have based my presentation around it. And, um, and thank you guys for coming. I'll see you next year. Story Structure, a presentation by Dan Wells, as mentioned, shamelessly pilfered from the role playing guide. OK, I call this the seven point system. And it is uh, created by one of those guys. They're the ones who were listed as authors on the website. So anyway, on the, on the page. Seven point system, there's a hook, a plot turn, a pinch, a midpoint, another pinch, another plot turn, and a resolution. We are going to beat this system to death, so write it down now. And the way this, I, I use this to structure all of, my, all of my books and the things I write. But there is an important caveat here. Whoa, you didn't get them? I told you to write them down. Don't worry, they're coming back. I told you, we're beating them to death. You will be so sick of those seven words, or nine words, because plot turn is two. All right, building a story. When you're starting a story, you have to have a story in mind. John Brown, in his great presentation yesterday, he talked about this. You've got to have something to say before you start to say it. Now, um, let's make this big caveat right here. Not everybody writes this way, OK? About half of you in here are outline writers, which is what I am. You will completely figure out what you're going to do before you do it, OK? The rest of you are what we call discovery writers, who sit down and just write as you go. I talked to some person about this, and she said, if I already know how it ends, why do I write it? <laughs> and I can't do that, but other people can't do this. The point is, either way, you need to know how to structure a story. Because if you're an outline writer, you do it before. And if you're a discovery writer, you're going to do it after, during the revision process, when you try to provide some form to the thing that you've just written. So either way, this can still be helpful to you. So before you construct your story, you need a pretty good idea what the story is about. As we said, you have to have some characters in mind, setting, conflict, all of those important things. I'm going to take for granted that you already know all that stuff. That's not what this is about. This is about. Building a story. So where do we start? Where do you guys think we start? Have you, at the end. Nice. Somebody cheated. OK, <laughs> we start at the end. So here we go. I told you they'd come back again. Resolution, that's the seventh one. I'll give you guys who are slow writers a chance to write down all seven if you want them, <laughs> even though they're grayed out and you can barely see them. Resolution, what's the resolution? We start at the end because 
Everything in the story leads to that moment. This is not the falling action. This is not the last chapter. This is the climax. This is the point, okay? What you're leading up to. This is where the story is going, what it's about, and you need to make sure you know what kind of resolution you want to have. So let's look at a couple of examples here. We have plot. Let's say your story is about plot. Good example of this is the first Star Wars movie. This movie was about who is where, when, what are they doing, and how are they going to blow something up, okay? The resolution then is something blows up. <laughs> the alternate is character. You can focus heavily on character, and of course, our example for that is Empire Strikes Back. The resolution in that movie was not an explosion, it was a discussion between two characters. It was a moral decision. So, there's a big difference between external conflicts and internal conflicts, and they're going to end in different ways. Different things are going to be important depending on what you choose to focus on in your story. If you focus on both, if you focus on both then you're awesome, and we'll talk about that later. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, as we go through these, we're going to build, using this system, the plot of the first Harry Potter book, Sorcerer's Stone. Um, and so our resolution there, what's the resolution? What's the big climax point of, of the first Harry Potter book? We save the stone. We save the stone via? Killing Voldemort, defeating Voldemort. So there we go. Harry defeats Voldemort. That's what we're building toward. So now that we know where we're ending, we need to start at the other end. We need to figure out where we're starting. And a really easy way to do this, and now let me point out at this point that these are not rules. There's no rules to writing, okay? But this is an easy method that I use to help me. So. One simple trick to figure out where you start is to just take the opposite state. Someone ends really strong, then you want them to start weak because that gives you an arc of progress so people can get invested in it and then you kind of know where your story's going. This is another reason why you need to have a good ending in mind. So let's look at our example, Batman Begins. <laughs> Batman, this movie ends with Batman in a position of great strength. He knows what he's doing, he can fly, he's a ninja, he can do everything, he's beating all the bad guys. <laughs> So it starts with him as this thoroughly depressed, directionless loser who has no goals in life, doesn't know what he's doing, he's just kind of moping around. So there's a very simple arc of growth, weakness to strength. A different kind of arc is a shift. In the Dark Knight, he's already strong. It's not a progression from weakness to strength, but from one kind of strength to another kind. He needs to learn different things. So the starting point in Dark Knight is not weakness, he's actually very strong. In fact, they, they make a point of this. You know, in the first movie, it, it takes him the whole movie long to defeat the Scarecrow. In the second movie, he beats up the Scarecrow in about 10 seconds and leaves him tied up. That's their way of saying, look, he's already awesome. That's not the story we're telling. So when you know what your end is and what your beginning is, so you're, then you, have, you know what your arc is going to be, that will let you know where you're going to go. So your hook is the, the thing at the very beginning, kind of your starting state. Harry Potter, what's our starting state? What's the opposite of awesome wizard defeats Voldemort? Poor little orphan who lives under the stairs in his sad, boring life. <laughs> and it's just, you couldn't possibly start weaker than he does here. In so <laughs> now, in between those two, there's a midpoint. And the midpoint is how you start moving from your beginning state to your end state. It is where the character moves from reaction to action. They spend the first part kind of running away. Let's just go straight to our example because it's great. Fellowship of the Ring. First half of this book is, oh no, let's try not to get killed. And the second half of the book is, let's take the fight to Sauron. Let's do something about our situation. And that midpoint is the Council of Elrond where they make that decision. And so they move from one state toward the other. 